steps are in place to cater to the high number of COVID-19 patients expected at this hospital as the numbers continue to rise. Okay, we are now making our way into the ward. Members, media, please go all the way to the back. Short of distance, please, 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 we're now inside one of the wards that have been set aside for COVID-19. So he's now giving the briefing to the president about what's happening in the specific ward. Actually, all three floors. All the three floors, yes, they have. So in the end, you'll have how many patients here? We'll, we'll have run about... Uh, 60 patients. Oh, 60. Okay. When you put them all together, them all in together. each ward is around about 30. Okay. okay. Yes. We have patients already in the second and the third floor. Okay. That are already there. Confirmed COVID patients. Oh wow. And uh, our PUIs are also in another section of the hospitals. What where is it's PUI? Under, it's patient under identification. Oh, those okay. that have, we don't have confirmed results yet. Okay. Yes. So those are actually. So how many pay COVID patients do you have? In totality, confirmed COVID patients, we've got around about. Twelve patients were here in with, this. Within, 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 within this. this, but the majority of our patients are, are PUIs. We're about we're about twenty five PUIs. Okay. At the present, we're just waiting for results to come out, and then we'll redistribute them accordingly. Okay. If they're positive, then they'll come here. Okay. If they're negative, then we we'll take them to the other section of the hospital. Okay. Is, uh, better for us for okay. okay. Yes, yes. All right. <laughs> that's, that's so. This was like empty, now it's uh, been revitalized. Yes, it was empty, standing fallow, it was not in use yes. at all to put this totality. So it's been revitalized to, to be what it looks like right now. All right. Yes. And you've got the medical staff who can come in and... Uh and attend yes. to them. Like, like uh, MEC has said, mm. the, we've got nurses that have come on board yes. to assist us. Yes. The, the medical doctors, that is, we're still using them, the same medical doctors that we had on the platform, yes. but we just redirected them and we've converged into what we call COVID areas. Yes. So, it, and so because of what we've done, the number of patients that we're normally seeing previously, we've yes. decreased those because we've decreased you know, our electives okay. and all that and OPDs. Yes. Okay. So those doctors then have converted to us what we call the COVID war. Ipsos has uh, released its uh, study findings on COVID-19 in South Africa. Uh, for more on these findings, we are joined via Skype by Eze Tu Mandelize uh, from Ipsos. Thank you so very much uh, for joining us, Eze Tu. Thank you so much for having me. Very interesting findings in the, the Ipsos uh, COVID-19 tracker. Uh, let's chat about some, some of those uh, findings, starting with uh, the confidence in institutions and uh, South Africa's coping strategies. Uh, it seems that confidence is uh, on the rise in all aspects when it comes to doctors and healthcare, the government, the Department of Health. But I do see a slight drop in confidence in the WHO. Uh, does that surprise you? And, 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 and do we know why? this is the case definitely confidence is is increasing when it comes to um doctors and other healthcare officials and also that the government and also the national department of health with the who when we looked at our findings uh, in march the confidence level was about 78 percent and this has now declined to about 76 percent in april and i think for me this is not surprising because if you've been following current affairs there has sort of been a bad press associated with the world health organization and also when you uh, reflect on what um don't uh, the president of the U.S., Donald Trump, has been saying recently about um, the World um, Health Organization. So for me, that is definitely not surprising that people are now starting to lose confidence in, in, in it as an institution that is ready to combat uh, COVID-19. And, and looking at the level of a threat posed by the coronavirus, as people see it uh, a threat for themselves uh, personally from a different uh, province, I mean, this is very interesting indeed. KZN and Mpumalanga seeming to be feeling more and more threatened at this time. Gauteng and the Western Cape, which is quite ironic because you have the Western Cape where the numbers are rising, the COVID-19 numbers are rising, uh, but they kind of don't uh, feel that uh, there's a personal threat. Do we, do we have any understanding? 
understanding as to why we're seeing different uh, patterns uh, from province to province. And it's not even linked uh, to how much that uh, particular province is affected uh, by the virus. Where, where does this uh, all come from? There's, I mean, there's a lot of confidence from Gauteng and Western Cape, uh, 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 people in the Western Cape and in Gauteng, who simply are not, uh, don't seem to be that, that shaken. It definitely is interesting, especially when you look at the infection rates as well as the death toll in the different provinces. And I think for me, it's quite interesting to notice that the Eastern Cape and, and Houting are less worried. And in this study that we've conducted, we did not really uh, get into the details as to why people from these different provinces feel that way. But if I can just maybe from my own opinion in this, in this case, and this is not from the research itself, I would uh, perhaps think that maybe uh, the manner in which, you know, a response to the virus itself has been handled by the, 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 the government itself. Because if you would notice from the data itself, it shows that people in South Africa are, are now becoming more confident in their ability or the readiness of our government, as well as the National Department of Health to sort of handle the situation and also the, the kind of, uh, of health professionals that we have in the country right now. So it, maybe it has more to do with, you know, um, the response to the virus more than anything else. But the data itself does not really have figures when it comes to the reasons why they have more, uh, they, they are less concerned about the threat that COVID-19 poses. You've also taken a look at, uh, which is quite important as well, uh, how we're changing uh, what we do. And, and, and we're going to put up the graphic. Our team is putting up that graphic uh, for our viewers just to take a, a look at. Here it is up here now. Uh, in terms of avoiding shaking hands, avoiding uh, close contact uh, with others, can you speak uh, to that uh, graph for us and, and what were the fun, uh, fundamental uh, findings about that sort of, I'd say, change in, in, in behavior really? I think really what this graph is, is showing is that there is really a change in terms of uh, people's behavior and also in terms of people's attitudes when it comes to to to, to COVID nineteen and this uh, this virus has sort of you know changed the way in which we we behave and more people are now taking personal action to make sure that they remain safe. And if you look at the findings themselves, they are showing that uh, more people are now washing their hands more frequently and more people are now using hand sanitizers more frequently. People are now practicing social distances more than they, they, they were practicing it before. And I think for me, this is quite interesting and it shows that online South Africans in general are sort of taking personal action to make sure that they are safe from, uh, for, from the virus itself but in terms of issues like you know getting medication flu vaccines and also stocking up of things like vitamins and uh, not many online south africans are taking those measures so leading measures at this point um, include washing of hands more frequently using sanitizers more frequently avoiding mass gatherings and also ensuring that they practice social distancing so we know, this has sort of changed people's uh, behavior in, in general yeah we, we know that uh, generally you know ipsos will do um you know tracking of uh, you know voter patterns and uh, that's that's generally how we, when we hear from from ipsos in this particular finding where you're you're, you're tracking you know covid uh, covid 19 uh, responses i i wonder to myself what will these sort of findings do and 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 how will they then assist uh, perhaps government or, or or the general public of south africa really in 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 this fight against uh, covid 19 uh, would this report then be used in order to perhaps try and change uh, you know patterns and how how people are behaving, just really the aim of, of, of putting together this sort of uh, uh, COVID tracker. So basically what this COVID trigger does is it measures uh, how people's perceptions and behaviors are evolving as we are dealing with the, uh, with the pandemic itself. And what is interesting is that um, governments and other institutions that are working uh, to, to sort of uh, combat this virus are getting a sense of what the public is thinking, what the opinions of the public are, what the expectations of the public are, and where the gaps lie in terms of you know, education around this, uh, this, this pandemic itself. And what is interesting is that as messages have been going out for people to start practicing social distancing, for instance, we are now starting to see that people are actually doing it. And as more educational programs have been out there to sort of encourage people to wash hands more, we are now seeing that people are now doing that. But not only is this tracker um, effective for, 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 for government and other institutions, mm. but it's also important and, in, and, and interesting for brands because brands can use these findings to sort of see which brands are doing well and what people are thinking and what people's shopping behavior is like um, now that we are faced with this pandemic. 
For instance, the findings themselves, they also showed that, that people are now shopping for more essential things than, than luxury items because they're trying to, to sort of look after their finance, for their finances. So this is also interesting for brands and also for retail companies. For instance, uh, the findings show that people or online South Africans, to be precise, um, think that retail uh, stores have a more responsibility when it comes to combating uh, COVID-19. And about 72% of them believe that they're actually doing a good job in terms of doing that. But they're also showing a bit of a, uh, of, of a gap. They're highlighting a bit of a gap in terms of communication strategies, in terms of getting the right information from retail stores. So this tracker is very important for, for different se sectors in society to be able to see what the public thinks, what the public is also expecting, and what the public is experiencing in this in the, in the situation at hand. Uh, how far and wide uh, does your, your sort of research go into tracking these, these sort of behaviors? And the reason that I ask is because, you know, it's very easy to sort of track uh, people who already are sort of online anyway and can kind of do uh, surveys but then I wonder um, when it comes to people in let's say the rural areas are we able to have an analysis in terms of how they are uh, maybe changing uh, their own behaviors whether it's you know we've got here about washing hands for example I mean the situation can get a little bit tricky when it comes to some of those areas that are far out. At this point in time, the study only focuses on online South Africans who have internet access at home or also on their mobile phones. It does not um, uh, cover anything outside of that scope. But in terms of the, the, the marginal of error, it's about 3.5. And also, this is almost the, the 64% of the South African population. So the, these findings that I'm talking about now, they are only based on online South Africans who have internet access on their, on their phones or, or at home, wherever they are based. So it does not cover anyone outside of the scope at this point. All right. Thank you so very much for giving us the time. We appreciate it so very much uh, here on SABC News. That's uh, Eze to Mandelize speaking uh, for Ipsos, who, of course, uh, done a COVID tracker uh, for us, which you can certainly find uh, online uh, there. Well, well, the